Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. Now today's episode is gonna be about trying to get the X5 sorted for towing, but a quick update on the 335. So I finally had a chance to fit the AliExpress steering wheel retrimmed cover thing. And yeah, pretty happy with how it looks. It does make the wheel pretty damn thick, but I mean, if you're used to holding big things, you'll be absolutely comfortable with them with these i got no issues with it i quite like it very happy with it for what it cost i think it was about 70 dollars delivered and yeah it really does make the whole interior look a bit nicer uh, other update with this car i have also fixed that boost leak that i mentioned in yesterday's episode it was just a loose intercooler pipe which i completely forgot to connect and we have vicious guard dog on patrol all right let's get on with the x5 and i'll show you what we're doing Okay, so as we've said a few times on this channel, we bought this X5 with the, I guess, the idea of being able to use it to tow other vehicles with. Now, to get that finally set up, there's a few things we want to get done. The car, so well, the X5, it did come with a tow bar. It is the fully 2.7 ton rated tow bar, and it has got wiring already in there. One thing that's weird about the genuine, it's not weird, one thing about the BMW wiring, they come with these pins here, which is a brilliant trailer connector. In fact, I'm really impressed with how that works. That links to a seven pin round, which is, I mean, I remember these connectors were quite popular 20 years ago, but it's like nobody uses the large seven pin connectors anymore. Now the dude we bought the car off, he did give us a seven pin large to five pin small adapter which is nice of him. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a anything five pin small, but that will adapt into the genuine BMW harness. So that is one little adapter there. Unfortunately, the trailer is a seven pin flat trailer. Now we do have seven pin small to seven pin flat adapter here. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is cut these two up and make that a connector there. That shouldn't be too hard. All of my other connectors, nothing I could make it work. So hopefully I'll cut those two up and that'll actually get the trailer connected to the vehicle. Now, another thing, especially if you're not in Australia, when you tow anything over, I think it's two tons, you do need to have an electronic breakaway system. Now with those electronic breakaway systems, that means the trailers have electronic brakes. So there's no hydraulic master cylinder on the ball of the, the trailer there. All this is solid. Uh, it's still got the cable handbrake, but yeah, basically the brakes are all electronic. Now again, the dude we bought it off was towing with this vehicle and he did have trailer brakes. And I can see, well, I've already seen, but this is the original connector that he had his trailer bait controller set up to. Now, I did some Googling and it looks like that connector there is either a Heyman and Reese or a Taconcha plug. Did some Googling and decided to buy the Taconcha unit on the hope that it is the same connector. And I did open it up the other day and bam, we have a Taconcha connector. So that means we will be able to plug, I'm just gonna open it up, I haven't actually looked at the unit yet. We're gonna be able to plug this unit in and that's actually gonna give the car proper control over the electronic brakes on the trailer, which is cool. The reason I went for this unit, uh, it was one of the few units where you can actually change the color of the screen. So being able to set it to nice BMW orange, I quite like that. So we're gonna get that installed today, wired in and working, make a harness so that we can actually connect the trailer to the car, and thirdly, get the winch. So the winch set up, we did speak to a few, we didn't speak, we did ask a few commenters about the winch. And in reality, getting an electric one, which is like the dream, um, they're just too expensive. To get a decent electric winch was gonna be sort of seven or $800 even for the China spec ones. We picked this up for 80 bucks. It is rated to three tons. And I have also bought a snatch block, which essentially doubles the capacity of the winch. So this is gonna do us. Um, I've used other car trailers with the same size winch as this and they pull cars up absolutely fine. This has got the nylon or whatever it is, rope. Not a, not a cable, which is just a bit nicer if it does happen to rub on anything. So I'll get that mounted as well. Mounting winches to trailers, there's probably a very specific way you should do it. What I've done is just seen what bolts I think are the right size. So we'll drill some holes and get that fitted up. I'm gonna get on with that first because I think this is gonna be the biggest job. And then we'll get onto the wiring. And hopefully by the end of this video, we'll be able to test and make sure we've actually got electronic brakes working. And the X5 should be ready to do some zero to 60 toe tests. Is that a thing? Yeah. Let's see if we can break this gearbox. I shouldn't joke, I shouldn't joke. Oh, also, I'm a tragic, I had to clean the interior. Doesn't it look good now for a, basically a 20 year old car? She's mint. Okay guys, I thought I'd show you what I'm doing just so that you can all laugh at me if this does fall off when we're on the side of the road one day. But this is, these are mainly used on boat trailers and I guess this is more of a, 
winch post for a, an electric winch maybe. But yeah, long story short, because of the way of all these holes are, and because this has got a big center piece, so basically you can't bolt through the middle here, um, the only way I could sort of do it with any symmetricalness to the mounting is just using the main two center ones. I mean, I'd like to put four bolts in it, but at the end of the day, I bet one bolt would probably have enough tensile strength to hold a car. And we did actually use this to winch the X5 into the shed uh, when it had no gearbox in it and rolled down the hill a little bit. And it was absolutely fine uh, the way that we mounted it. So I'm sure these two bolts are gonna be more than adequate. And that goes through there. Actually, one thing I am gonna do is put a little bit of paint on the insides there because knowing me, on my luck, that will go rusty very soon. Okay, that is the winch firmly bolted on. She is not going anywhere. That's definitely gonna be strong enough for a car. And don't know if you can see, we just got the two bolts up under there. Um, one thing that's killing me right now is this is like cheap galvanized zinc color where the trailer's a darker gray hammerite. Now I've got this paint, which is actually what I use just to fill those holes in. I think I'm gonna to have to paint the winch, but we'll do that another day. If you happen to see the winch as a different color in a future episode, that's why. Uh, another thing I'll just point out, if you're gonna buy one of these cheap winches, you do have to off-center them so that the handles don't rub. If actually, even if I could use the holes somehow or redrill holes in the base, um, I couldn't actually center it on the post because the handle would hit this part. Anyway, winch is done. Super exciting stuff, I know. Now I've got to work out how to crossbreed these two things. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually just cut into the genuine, the genuine trailer connector and try and wire on my flat pin. Um, so let's get them taken apart and see what they look like inside. Okay, so I got both of the ends. Well, actually I want this end really, don't I? But I got seven pin small and seven pin large and I wanted to see if the wiring colors sort of match up and it looks like they do. So hopefully you can see it there. On the top, we've got blue and red, although this one does have a white stripe. Then to the left of those, we have yellow and green. If we flip them right over, we've got black, white, and green. So it appears that the wiring is actually in the same configuration and the same colors, which means we might shoot out and be lucky here I'll take this end off and I might be able to just unpin this one and pin it straight into the flat pin. All right, so that is the flat pin plug on the genuine BMW wiring. I've used the original grommet, so it should actually seal nicely, although I think these aftermarket Narva plugs are pretty basic anyway. All right, I guess it's time to go and try it. I think I showed it to you guys at the start of the video, but the way that this connector connects is bloody sexual for a trailer plug. Once you get it around the right way. Hang on, okay. So that's in the undo position, slides in, and then that actually locks it in. And it's even got a bit around the other side that makes it all nice. So now we can connect the trailer to our new plug. Got dust in there. Hey. It goes that way. Okay, so that is now, hopefully that was in shot. That's now connected. Let's do some tests. So I'm not gonna connect to the trailer brakes up yet because there's a fair bit of current that goes through trailer brakes. So we've got less chance of catching on fire with my dodgy wiring without them. Okay, turn the AC off. And I think what I'll do, we'll just go headlights and hazard lights. So nothing's blown yet. Both hazard lights are working and the tail lights, hey. Tail lights are on, and we have hazard lights. All right, I'm, that's safe to say that all the wiring for the lights is around the right way. I haven't got brake lights. Actually, we'll just touch the brake and see if we pop a fuse. Nah, we're good. No error lights. I wonder if it tells us we've got a trailer on the board. No, it doesn't. Just check the right indicator. 
and the breakaway system's now charging, so that's getting power. We've got right indicator. Yeah, we're good. We are good. All right, let's plug this trailer brake system in and see what happens. So I've got the unit mounted up there. Hopefully the sun's not glaring. Bizarrely, as soon as I plugged it in, it did turn straight on, which I might have to read through the manual. I don't know if it's supposed to be on all the time or if it should be accessory. Again, I didn't actually do this wiring. It was the previous dude, so might need to check that. That's no good if it's on all the time. It'll flatten the battery. Um, however, it does seem to connect to the trailer and put the trailer brakes on. So that's, that's good. I guess we can go for a road test. I think, all right, let's do it. So I just thought I'd show you guys quickly, I've actually started the car up just to get the aircon and everything ready to go for a drive. But when the car is running, the trailer lights all flash. So I don't know if that's like a feature of the car to make sure it's still connected or what, but they're like, it's like almost like it's checking the bulbs are working. They're not fully lit, but they're just there. Anyway, we've got this camera here which is going to keep an eye on the wheels and we'll see if we can actually lock them up because electronic trailer brakes are actually supposed to be super powerful and we should be able to easily lock all the wheels up. We're all hitched up safely. Handbrake is off. And we've got the trailer brake unit there. Okay, park distance, calm down. So one thing I noticed just quickly, with it powered on, if I touch the brake now, we don't get any power going to the brakes on the trailer so because we're not moving but if I put it in reverse the trailer brakes are now working go to drive and we've got trailer brakes so it's weird if we put it in park let the foot off unless it's because it moves around no sorry about the PDC so as soon as I put it into reverse the trailer brakes actually start working all right let's Shut up, God, PDC. Okay, got the trailer going there, hopefully you can see. And we'll see if we lock the wheels up on this downhill. I couldn't, no, they weren't locking up, but that, that did show us that they were doing something. Ooh, the maximum on the braking system is, I think, 14, I think. So when you're seeing five, that's a fair bit of power going to the brakes. Now you guys will have vision of those rear wheels and you'll actually see if they're locking up. I can't see anything. I can hear it rattling. All right. And got a bit of speed up and we're braking. I can't even feel the trailer. One thing I will do, apparently we can do an override. That was all trailer brakes. I don't know. I can feel it slowing the car down. I'll do that again so you can see. It's actually stopping the car. But I can't tell if the wheels are locking up. I'll check in the mirror. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Let's put boost on, see what that does. Give me maximum boost. So according to this, we've now got a, a prime mover. That's what it looks like on the picture. Bow, bow, bow. So we'll just see if it breaks now. Ooh, look at those numbers. That still felt okay. All right, I think I'm gonna go out on the road and give it a proper road test at speed and we'll just see how it all feels. All right, so I just got back from the drive and I was playing with a couple of the boost settings and with it on no boost, uh, you can't really feel the trailer. It's, it works perfectly, I think. However, when I start adding the boost, you can actually feel the trailer slowing down faster than the car, which is good. But we're not getting that instant lockup, which I was expecting. I had tra electronic trailer brakes probably 15 or 16 years ago. And I remember you could, it would like jerk the car. They were super, super aggressive. Now I'm not sure if this controller is because it's one of the G meter ones. It's a bit more clever. Um, I'm really not sure, but I've been, because I'm not getting the instant lockup that I was expecting, I was expecting to get the trailer locking up, I've been playing with all the different menus, and I think we're gonna have a bit of an issue, or something we've gotta work out anyway, because this is like it's diagnostics mode, and I'll just start from the top. Uh, so the car is running at 14.1 volts, which is what you'd expect for a car that's charging. 
the stoplight voltage. Now, because the car is always checking for blown bulbs, it's got this voltage coming in. And obviously the trailer brakes use the brake light voltage to work out when to put the brakes on. If I touch the pedal, you can see there it goes up to 14 when it's deciding to. So I'm not sure if that's gonna have a play because it's doing the bulb checks. The output voltage, now that's the voltage that's going to the actual brakes. So if I touch the brake pedal, oh, we're not moving. Let me put it in drive. So as soon as we're in drive, and now when I touch the brake, so we sent three volts to the trailer brakes until we come to a stop. I'll see if I can get you guys to see everything. So, and then we stop. And as soon as the car stops moving, it turns the brakes off on the trailer. So it's pretty clever like that, which I think is pretty cool. Let's go back to neutral. And then the yeah, output voltage, output current, it, the highest I've seen this go up to is three amps, which again is not massive, but it was just me driving slowly in the yard. Battery voltage, so we're back to the start. Now, what worries me, yeah, stop lights. So we've got stop light voltage at 0.7. If I turn the tail lights on, hang on, no, that's not what we want. What do I wanna do? I wanna go, so output voltage, that's when it's sending power to the trailers. So if I let my foot off the brake now, we've got no power going to the trailer. If I turn the headlight, the, well, the headlights on, and I'll just put it in, yeah, see? As soon as you put the lights on, it starts applying the brakes on the trailer. So I'm not sure if we've got some sort of certain, you know, check trailer lights. So I'm not sure if it's like shorting out or because they're LEDs, it's running power into the brake light signal. I'm really not sure. Again, if I turn the headlights off, that'll drop down. Headlights on, takes a few seconds. And it builds up voltage. Turn the headlights off. And it drops down. So whenever you've got the headlights on, the brakes are gonna be dragging. That's a bit of a bad design. So yeah, I'm really not sure what's going on. Ah. Uh, so as soon as I turn the tail lights on, we get a stoplight current. And that's why the, so there's obviously some sort of an electrical bleed with the way the lighting's set up and it's bleeding back through the tail lights. Hmm. Got to do some Googling, got something to work out. But aside from that, we're on the money. The trailer actually, the brakes are perfect for driving. And I quite like the way that that controller uh, varies the amount of brake force you get. So not, not a complete success, but not a complete failure. Just got to do some more learning about how to set up trailer brakes on a vehicle like this. And we've also, I kind of want to work out what I need to do to not get the taillight warning on the dashboard as well, because I don't like taillight warnings. I don't like any warnings on the dashboard. You can't have BMW and have dashboard warnings. All right. So I think I'll park the trailer up for now. We'll do some Googling and we'll work out how to properly set it up. Hmm. I'm really not sure. So just doing a little bit more investigation into this weird little electrical brake problem. When you disconnect the trailer, the trailer brakes, instead of pulsing up to about seven and a half volts on the stoplights, they now pulse up to about 11.9. And if I turn the tail lights on, we have a solid 10 or 11 volts going through the tail, over through the stoplight circuit. And if I push the brake, it goes up higher. But yeah, we're getting some sort of bleed off into the stoplight circuit. So the lights are off and it will drop down to 0.4 volts, but then it shoots back up. So this problem is something to do with the way the BMW is doing its bulb checks, but it's confusing the trailer brake system. Um, to be honest, like it only pulses the brakes for a few set, like a split second, but and I wouldn't have noticed if I didn't get this one with the display showing me the output. Um, and I bet the the previous dude, if he had a more basic brake control, I bet he never would have known that it pulses the brakes all the time. But obviously, you don't want your trailer brakes pulsing when you're going down the highway. So, need to do some research about that. See if there's some sort of coding option to code the car so it doesn't pulse the brakes when you're towing or something and also need to work out a way to stop the car from thinking the 
trailer lights are out because they're LEDs. All right, so now we're gonna see if we can get that trailer backed up next to the shed. So we'll go reverse, turn that off, because it beeps all the time. And let's see what we can do here. It's got to be hard work for the uh, old brakes. Not the brakes, the transmission. And I think that'll do. Check trailer lights. Yeah, bit of a weird one. Could be a BMW thing. Well guys, a bit more of a vlog today, but had a few little errands we needed to sort out. This is where the trailer sleeps, by the way. Safest spot, still gets locked up. All right, I'm gonna end off there. Got some Googling to do, try and work out what's going on with BMW and trailer lights. See how it just flashes all the time? It's weird. It's weird. And even the breakaway system is, because this charges off of your tail lights. So it's charging every time that does a tail light check. It's fully charged. I don't know. If you've got any experience with BMW trailer lights, please let me know. I'm at a bit of a loss. But yeah, how good would that gearbox go back in the trailer up this little bit of a hill here? Very impressed. Mm hmm, 335. All right. I'm gonna end off there. I think I'm ready for a beer. All right, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Are you gonna get them? You gonna protect all the cars? Whoa, whoa, vicious little dog, vicious dog.